The Legend of the Golden Snail by Graham Bass. Legend tells of a golden snail that lived long ago in the mythical spiral isles. When it journeyed through its magical realm, it took on the shape of a fantastical golden galleon, a snailing ship. One day, a grand enchanter captured the mighty beast and put it under a spell, forcing it to obey his commands. He roamed the oceans aboard the golden snail for a hundred years. When finally he tired of life, the grand enchanter banished the golden snail to the ends of the earth, so no one else would sail in it. And there it remains to this very day, until a new master comes to claim it. Whoever finds the snail must utter the magic verse to break the spell. Snailing ship, rise and shine, hoist your sails and trim them fine. Taste once more the salty brine, for with this spell I make you mine. And then, be they grand enchanter or gallant captain, the golden snail is theirs to command. The legend of the golden snail was Wilbur's favourite story. He imagined the golden snail sailing through the magical realm to its home in the spiral isles. And he listened with wide eyes to the part where the grand enchanter banished it to the ends of the earth. There it was doomed to remain, so the legend went, until a new master came to claim it. Wilbur always made his mother read that part twice. Wilbur decided to find the golden snail. He collected all the equipment he would need for the voyage. Behold, the grand enchanter, he cried. I'm off to roam the oceans, back in a hundred years. I made you a captain's hat, said his mother. And so Wilbur set sail for the ends of the earth. As he turned his little boat into the breeze, he recited the magic spell from the legend. Snailing ship, rise and shine. Hoist your sails and trim them fine. Taste once more the salty brine, for with this spell I make you mine. Be sure to wear your hat, called his mother. He came to a bush of blossoming butterflies. They were wilting in the sun. I don't have time to stop, said the Grand Enchanter. I'm off to the ends of the earth to find the golden snail. But he looked again at the butterfly buds. They seemed so hot and thirsty. He saw a coral island and, sna and sailed into a little bay. All at once, the island transformed into a monstrous sea creature. Take that, cried the Grand Enchanter, prodding the monster in its weak spot. But then he saw it was tangled in a net. Hardly a fair fight. Hold still, he commanded. A motley crew of earwig pirates aboard a bulbous bottle boat were catching unlucky lanternfish and stealing their light bulbs. The Grand Enchanter considered what to do. Perhaps he should join the pirates, then betray them and take the treasure for himself. But it was late and he had to press on for the ends of the earth, so he decided on a quicker and more courageous plan. Wilbur sailed on, a little downhearted. He suspected he hadn't made a very convincing Grand Enchanter so far. He decided he would have to do better. But that afternoon, his little boat drifted into the dreadful doldrums. Some newly blossomed butterflies brought the wind back. 
he became he became he became ensnared in the slithering sea. A grateful friend arrived just in time. A wild storm blew him into the maze of madness. A glowing avenue of lights guided him safely onwards. Eventually, Wilbur came to the ends of the earth. The go a golden shell lay gleaming on the sand. Oh, he said, I thought it would be bigger. But Wilbur was determined to be a proper grand enchanter and roam the oceans for a hundred years, maybe even a thousand. So he held up his arms and recited the magic verse. Snailing ship, rise and shine. Hoist your sails and trim them fine. The earth shook, the sky rumbled, and the golden snail emerged from its slumber. It was bigger, much bigger. Wilbur's eyes grew wide, but he kept his nerve. Taste once more the salty brine, for with this spell I make you mine. The magic spell was complete. The mighty beast sprouted masts and snails and a rudder, a snailing ship. It turned to its new master and waited for his command. The grand enchanter raised his arms high, but then he saw the heavy chains and the cruel collar with its bell. And there at the ends of the earth, after all his long years of journeying, Wilbur realized that he didn't want to be a grand enchanter after all. He thought back to the legend. Then he took off his hat and said, I command you to take me to the spiral isles. The golden snail surged towards the crashing waves. Wilbur tied his little boat to the snail's stern and leapt aboard. To his amazement, the mighty beast reared back on its keel and lifted up into the air. They soared up, up, up through the clouds and emerged into a stunning new world, an ocean in the sky. They swept down to the spiral aisles and dropped anchor in a sheltered bay of swirling mist. I've brought you home, said Wilbur, as he stepped ashore. He put on his hat again. I hereby release you from your enchantment. The golden snail snorted in delight as the chains, collar and bell fell away. The rope holding Wilbur's battered boat snapped. There was a flash of light and with a triumphant trumpeting, the golden snail was gone. Wilbur was alone on a cloud with no way to get home, but something was happening to his boat. The golden bell had hooked itself over the bow sprite, a parting gift. As he watched, the little boat began to glow. It had turned to solid gold and it had wings. As he headed homeward, Wilbur thought about his adventures and smiled. He knew he hadn't been a very good grand enchanter, but he was probably the best gallant captain there ever was. And the captain's cat purred in agreement.